Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Right, so welcome to our video on crash course in quantum mechanics. Now, you know, quantum mechanics is very, very vast and I am I'm, I'm sure that I would not be able to, you know, cover this in one video itself. So I'll try and cover it in two videos, right? In this video, I'll be talking about operators and particle in a 1D, 3D box because mostly the easy questions come from this part. So this is very, very important. All right. Now, first of all, over here that I've written, this is the condition for linear operator. That is any operator A, which is acting on some function FX and GX. Uh, if it is equal to operator A acting individually on fx and gx, that is said to be a linear operator. In simple terms, if I talk about square root, taking square root, okay, so square root is a, uh, it's a, it's an operator, right? Square root is an operator. So if I say, let's say my function fx is, um, let's say it's six and this gx is three, so the total becomes nine. So under root of nine is equal to three. All of you know, right? But uh, if I'm taking fx to be 6 and gx to be 9 under root of 6 and under root of 3 that will not be equal to 3 okay if you take under root of 6 plus under root of 3 that will not come out to be 3 so a square root is not a linear operator that's how you can find out whether an operator is linear or not right so quantum mechanical operators it's important that they should be linear then we have um, operator a into operator b uh, sorry this is if if you have square brackets and we have a, a operator and b operator that means this is a commutator and what exactly is a commutator 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 is a operator b operator function of fx minus of b operator a operator function of fx fx is not compulsory but to solve commutators it becomes easy if you take some function so uh, over here what does it what does this mean a operator comma b operator if it's square bracket it means whether they commute or not and what do you mean by commute or not commute okay so if if this comes out to be equal to zero that is a operator b operator where b operator is first acting on the function fx minus b operator a operator over here a operator is first acting on the function fx so if this is the case and we get equal to zero then we say the operators commute and if the operators commute then we can find their values simultaneously like we can find the value of both the operators at the same instant at the same point of time or simultaneously but if it, if it is not equal to zero then we cannot find their uh, value simultaneously that means either we will know the value of a operator or we we'll know the value of b operator we cannot know the both the values simultaneously all right so this is the significance of commutation now these two are very very important identities and i have discussed some questions on an academy also related to these identities because there have been questions that have been asked uh, using these identities so uh, what are the identities this is nothing but commutator only but if we have let's say a operator b operator comma c operator so you see these two operators are together then how do we find out the commutator so the commutator of a operator b operator comma c operator is nothing but what you need to do is whichever two operators are coming together whichever two operators are coming together um, you take one operator to the left and one operator to the extreme right so if you take one operator to the left out of the bracket you get a operator b operator c operator plus now you have taken the see these two operators are coming together now you take the b operator outside on the right so now you get a operator c operator b operator so this is the identity similarly if we have a operator comma b operator c operator now these two operators are coming together so you take the left one to the extreme left and you take the right one to the extreme right so if you take the left one to the extreme left we get uh, b operator uh, or commutator of a operator c operator plus now we are taking c operator to the extreme right so a operator b operator commutator into c operator okay so this is the identity this is very very important all right if you want to see those questions that i have uh, you like solved using this identity i would request you to go to my an academy profile okay this is the most important i'll star market this is very very important if not in this exam this will be useful in some other exam this is a very important identity and the identity is a commutator of x operator and p operator in x direction to the power n is equal to n i h cross h cross is h by 2 pi n i h cross p operator n p operator to the power n minus 1 this is very very important i'm telling you this is a very important identity and how can we use this so let's say we have been given x operator and we have to find the commutator of x operator and p, p operator 
पी एक्स ऑपरेटर होल स्क्वायर और पी एक्स ऑपरेटर स्क्वायर सो देन वी यूज दिस आइडेंटिटी सो एन इज बेसिकली द पावर ऑफ पी सो द पावर ऑफ पी इन दिस केस इज टू सो टू विल राइट डाउन ओवर हेयर टू आई एच क्रॉस पी टू दी पार एन माइनस वन एन इज टू सो टू माइनस वन वन सो वी गेट टू आई एच क्रॉस पी ऑपरेटर सो दिस इज द वैल्यू दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो नो मैटर वॉट द क्वेश्चन इज एक्स टू दी पार पी एक्स क्यूब एक्स टू दी पार पी एक्स फोर इफ यू ट्राई एंड सॉल्व इट बाय द नॉर्मल दिस मेथड इट विल बी वेरी वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड राइट सो यू नीड टू सेव टाइम एंड देर फोर दिस आइडेंटिटी विल हेल्प यू अ लॉट now there is a, the, the, this question was asked for four marks in csi net exam and you have to use your mind okay you have to use your um, you know you have to use logic because this t operator is nothing but your kinetic energy operator and this p operator is momentum operator now their commutator is equal to 0 if you try and solve it with this method it will take you a lot of time six it can take you four to five minutes at least to solve this commutator but it's not worth it four marks and if you devote five minutes to that it is not it is totally not worth it right so what you can do is see you know that kinetic energy the formula for kinetic energy is equal to p square by 2m right you know that kinetic energy is equal to p square by 2m and i told you if two operators will commute if we can know their values simultaneously okay so let's say we know the value of momentum can we know the value of kinetic energy at the same time obviously because kinetic energy is equal to p square by 2m see mass is constant so mass obviously will know of the substance whatever we are trying to measure of the system that we are trying to measure will know the mass because mass is constant and we also know the value of p because the kinetic energy is equal to p square by 2m so we know the value of momentum mass you already know so kinetic energy also we can find out if we know the value of momentum at a particular time at the same time we can find out the kinetic energy also so definitely they will commute and this logic how would hardly take you 5 to 10 seconds to understand so now if you try and find out this operator x square px x uh, uh, x operator whole square px now this is very very relevant because over here you can use this identity a operator b operator comma c operator because x operator square you can write down as x operator into x operator right this you can write down as x operator into x operator comma px operator so you can make use of this identity a operator b operator comma c operator commutator so this is where you can utilize these two formulas all right the next is angular momentum now there are many many questions that have been asked in your exam from these kinds of problems and they are very very typical so i'll give you the values so if you have lx ly operator if you want to find the commutator of lx ly it will be equal to i h cross lz operator okay basically whatever two values you are taking let's say we are taking here x and y the operator will be uh, the the commutator will be i h cross lz okay so like if you are taking lx ly it will be lz if you are taking ly lz it will be i h cross lx operator and if you are taking lz lx it will be equal to i h cross ly operator but be careful over here they can be a little smart they can instead of lx ly they can give you ly lx so in case they reverse the values that is in case of L lx ly they give you ly lx then over here minus sign will come so be sure about this that if they exchange the positions of any of these two um Uh, any of these two operators then you get the negative value okay so if uh, if you have ly lz it is equal to minus is it's equal to i h cross lx but if we instead of ly lz they give us lz ly then a negative sign will come over here but if we take the square of the angular momentum if we take the square of the angular momentum and we uh, commute it with the individual um, angular momentums in different directions like lx ly and lz then they commute and the value is equal to 0 so a direct question has been asked from these th these identities right these commutators so be careful now the next thing that we need to discuss is particle in a 1d box i'll come on this side so in particle in a 1d box the formula you obviously you know it's n square h square n square h square by 8 ml square l is the length m is the mass if you're taking an electron in the particle then it's the mass of the electron um, h is the planck's constant right be sure about the physical identity like the 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 units okay sometimes they can confuse you with the units so be careful with the units just see the conversion right of energy energy units then we have wave function of 1d box that is equal to under root 2 by l sin n pi x by l this is super important okay why because all the questions that ask you to find the probability of a particle in let's say in a particle in a box uh, where the particle is lying between um, l by 4 and 3 l by 4 what is the probability of the particle being found in between l by 4 and 3 l by 
4 or they can give you any value l by 6 and l by 9 any value they can give so for that you will have to use this identity you have to uh, see i have solved such questions or the probability questions of particle in a 1d box and on my unacademy profile so you can go ahead and watch that that is very important they can be asked in the exam they have been asked a lot of times in gate exam in the net exam i have not seen so many questions from that okay then this identity will help you a lot uh, help you a lot that sine square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta upon 2 this is a very important identity if you are trying to find the probability of a particle in some uh, given dimension some given um, like some given boundary conditions okay then particle in a 2d box the formula remains same h square by 8 ml square just we have two dimensions now so in case of just n square we have nx square and ny square and in particle in a 3d box we'll have nx square ny square and nz square so h square h square by 8 ml square will remain common in all the three cases only we'll add uh, two dimensions in 2d box and three dimensions in 3d box but there are a lot of consequences because of this and sometimes the question is asked on degeneracy so let's say we have energy of a 2d box equal to 5 h square by 8 ml square so 5 h square by 8 ml square that means the nx square plus ny square value is equal to 5 now nx square ny square value is equal to 5 how can it be equal to 5 if we take ny equal to 1 uh, and nx equal to 2 so 2 square plus 1 square that will be equal to 5 but it can also be the opposite that nx is equal to 1 and ny is equal to 2 that then also will get the value 5 so there are two cases by which you are getting the value equal to 5 and that is what is called as a degeneracy so the degeneracy of 5 h square by 8 ml square energy state of a particle in a 2d box is 2 so these questions are asked that what is the degeneracy of a particle in a 2d box okay with energy 5 h square by 8 ml square similarly if in a 3d box you are given that the energy of the 3d box is 11 h square by 8 ml square then what is the degeneracy now how can we get this value 11 how can we arrange nx ny and nz so let's say we take one of these values to be 3 so 3 square is 9 so nx equal to 3 square ny equal to 1 and nz equal to 1 so 3 square plus 1 square plus 1 square that will give us value 11 but over here what i have taken i have taken nx to be 3 ny equal to 1 and nz equal to 1 i can also take nx equal to 1 ny equal to 3 and nz equal to 1 and also i can take nx equal to 1 ny equal to 1 and nz equal to 3 so there are three ways by which i can get this energy 11 h square by 8 ml square so the degeneracy of this state will be 3 so this is how you need to find out the de degeneracy let's say we have been given instead of 11 we have been given 12 h square by 8 ml square now if we have value 12 h square by 8 ml square there is only one arrangement by which we can get that value that all the three nx ny and nz are equal to 2 so if all if all of them are equal to 2 only then we'll get the energy 12 h square by 8 ml square so for a 3d box uh, of energy 12 h square by 8 ml square degeneracy will be 1 because there is only one arrangement by which we can get this energy 12 h square by 8 ml square right so this was about particle in 1d 2d and 3d box now we are talking about hermitian operators uh, many questions almost every year one question is there in every each and every paper there is a question on hermitian operator so i have made a crash course video in itself on hermitian operators it's that important so i'll uh, attach a link somewhere over here for a particle or somewhere over here i don't know where it will come so um, you can watch that video it's a 18 to 20 minute video on hermitian operators in case you're confident i am just summarizing what i had uh, taught in that video and that is that if uh, this is very important if a is hermitian so first of all all the eigenvalues of a hermitian operator are real okay all the eigenvalues of a hermitian operator are real that you should know real means it could be negative or positive but it's a real value but if i am taking if i am saying operator a is hermitian then the square of operator a will also be hermitian and its eigenvalues will always be positive okay so if i'm saying operator a is hermitian and operator a square is also hermitian then the values the eigenvalues of operator a square will always be positive they will not be negative this is a very important identity of hermitian operators and the second identity is if a operator and b operator are hermitian that is let's say we have two operators a and b if a is also hermitian and b is also hermitian then if i club those operators if i take the sum of a uh, if i take the multiplication of a operator and b operator that is i am clubbing both the operators together then both of the operators together will only be hermitian if a and b commute okay so over here i have written a operator and b operator b operator are hermitian product of a operator b operator is also hermitian only if a 
the commutator of a operator b operator is equal to zero i'll take an example how you can use this so i talked about kinetic energy and put and momentum operator right kinetic energy and momentum operator so kinetic energy is obviously hermitian because if we try to find out the kinetic energy of a particular quantum mechanical system we get a real value right we get a real value so kinetic energy operator is hermitian obviously we kinetic energy is a physical observable quantity so we'll obviously get a um, real value uh, associated with a quantum mechanical system similarly momentum is also a physically observable quantity so momentum operator is also hermitian and kinetic energy operator is also hermitian now if someone tells you what is the um, does does the does, uh, does the product of kinetic energy and momentum operator uh, is that also hermitian so for that you have to find the commutator of uh, kinetic energy and momentum and since it's equal to zero that means the product of kinetic energy operator and momentum operator will also be a hermitian operator so this is how you can find out whether it is hermitian or not then there are certain things that are related to hermitian operators like in this is in conjunction in conjunction with the hermitian operators there's something called as a adjoint so if i take some value l or some operator l and i take its adjoint and i get the operator back then it's said to be hermitian okay and a joint is, rep is represented by this plus sign or you can say a dagger sign it's called a dagger okay similarly over here also if i take a joint of this l operator and i get minus of that operator then it's said to be anti hermitian okay and these are some of the identities associated with adjoints like sum of l plus m adjoint is equal to l adjoint plus m adjoint um then uh, l adjoint to the power to the adjoint itself like l dagger to the power dagger is equal to l itself then if you have a constant multiplied by l and we take that joint then it is equal to co complex conjugate of the co constant plus the uh, adjoint okay l adjoint and then we have lm adjoint which is equal to m adjoint l adjoint so these are some of the um, identities this is only for revision purposes if you want to see how we use them to find out whether operators hermitian or not then you need to see that video for which i have already given you the link right you can just click the i button it might be here or over here just click the i button and see that video right so i hope this video was helpful to you in the next video i might be covering some, some other topics but mainly i have covered all the topics that but yet there are some important formulas that I have missed out in this um, crash course video so i'll definitely be uploading it in the next crash course video and i'm pretty sure it's going to be really small because i've covered most of the parts over here and anyway if you think this video is quite fast you can slow it down using the youtube options and if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel thank you so much